And I have to tell you that after having a chance to talk to Ralph Nader's staff, after being able to interview Mr. Nader, uh, I do think that there is a well-founded suspicion by a lot of Democrats that Ralph Nader is acting, whether unconsciously or consciously, as an agent to throw the election to George W. Bush. The Democrats say anybody but Bush, whereas in reality, it really doesn't matter. Either way, they've got this election fixed. As we said, this is the American dictatorship, where the elite gets their man, their puppet, their figurehead in the position of power. We were partially responsible. Our government was partially responsible for Saddam Hussein, as we were supporting any so-called anti-communist dictator in the world. Along with the British, we helped entrench him as a dictator of Iraq in 1979. We equipped him with arms. We gave him foreign assistance and credits. We had our corporations apply and receive export permits from the Department of Commerce in the 1980s under the Reagan and Bush one administration, providing this brutal dictator with the raw materials for chemical and biological warfare. In 1983, Donald Rumsfeld, Special Envoy, visited Saddam Hussein when these materials were being used and didn't say anything. He was our dictator after all, wasn't he? He was our dictator. The U.S. government has overthrown over 50 dictators since World War II without invading them. They're experts at overthrowing not our dictators, the other side's dictators. It's interesting just to speculate. Why in the world, knowing that he's a tottering dictator with disloyal troops ready to run at a moment's notice, and surrounded by enemies, why in the world didn't the U.S. government under George W. Bush merely overthrow him instead of invade Iraq? There's a three-letter word for that, folks. Oil! Oil. What did we see in the last election between Albert Gore and George W. Bush in 2000? We saw two different rival factions inside the New World Order fighting for control, fighting for the management position of CEO of the New World Order, of Slavery Incorporated. It's clear that Al Gore did win the popular vote. It's not clear if that popular vote was actually his or if Democratic operatives uh, had stuffed ballot boxes and manipulated votes at the local level to the point of him winning by a narrow margin. But what is clear is that George W. Bush and different members of the constabulary in Florida and other states did steal the election, did block recounts, did disregard numbers that showed that Al Gore had indeed won the election. And then when that was in question, the Supreme Court, seven of the nine members appointed by Republicans, then returned the favor and appointed George Walker Bush as the President of the United States. We're talking about a dictatorship of the mind, where the people are scared into absolute submission. Did you ever imagine that you would see the federal government up on television saying, well, the terrorists may want to disrupt our democratic process, so we're going to have to disrupt the democratic process. We may need to cancel or suspend the election if there's a threat or if there is a terrorist attack. But I thought the terrorists want to disrupt our elections, so why would you now try to disrupt the elections? How obvious, how transparent, how see-through is that? There was a case in Tennessee where the tabulation software added illegally a quarter of a vote to the favored candidate for every one vote that the unfavored candidate received. Now that was flat out wrong, but because this particular unfavored candidate had Judge Joe Brown on his side, they were able to sue and find out exactly what happened. So we understand that these manipulations are going to take place. ESNS, election system software. Republican Senator Chuck Hagel, who is he? He's got ownership ties to a holding company, to ESNS. 
Well, he's a 20-year friend of the Bush family. He almost became our vice president instead of Dick Cheney. And he won his seat in the Senate twice by these big landslides in Nebraska in a state that had not elected a Republican senator in over 24 years. But you know what? The votes were counted. 80% of his votes were counted by ES&S voting machines. Maybe it's a little coincidence. I don't know. Don't know. It's very important for everyone out there to spend time looking at the election process in your county and your city. While Americans are being fed a steady diet of Michael Jackson and Lacey Peterson and lots of football, our elections are being stolen by the owners and controllers of electronic voting machine companies by rigged software and no paper audit trails. And time is running out for us to do something about it. I spoke to Libertarian Distinguished Speaker Series here in Austin, Texas, and I have to tell you, I was delighted when I told the crowd of several hundred people that if anybody here disagrees with me, uh, please ask a question, please state why. And no one said that they disagreed with me. This shows that we're winning the intellectual battle, that a mass awakening, a renaissance is taking place. And that's the best news I can give you. You know when a tornado is coming or an earthquake, and they've done studies in this at major universities, mice, dogs, cats, get restless, start running around, get upset, sometimes hours, some cases even days before. They have that sixth sense. They, they have that instinct. They have that, that survival mechanism uh, deep inside them. And we all have that too as the most advanced creature on this planet. But it's pushed to the side by modern culture. We're supposed to ignore it. So the point I'm trying to make is, deep down, people know that something is wrong. Deep down, people are ready to move and stand up against the new world order. And it was exciting to be able to hear the speaker before I spoke, who detailed uh, just some of the key smoking guns and bullet points and red flags concerning industrialized election fraud. In 2002, elections were held in Iraq. And guess who got 100% of the votes? Saddam Hussein, of course. No big surprise there. But nothing like that could ever happen in our country, right? <laughs> well, what if I were to tell you today that virtually any hacker with a laptop could hack into the electronic voting machines that are being used um, in most of the states across our country that are going to be used by 50 million Americans in November while they're voting for president, adding votes, changing votes, and changing the final tally without being detected. Uh, the work that you heard earlier uh, being spoken about with the electronic voting machines is very, very serious. This is the arrogance of government. And you can see that they're getting more and more arrogant, more and more aggressive. And that's been the norm throughout history. Governments are tyrannical, powerful, ruthless people always seek to get into positions of greater control. That's just been human history, but somehow the mainstream media, mind washers of the last 50 years, have convinced the general public, the middle class namely, that government is nothing but good, it never does anything wrong, anybody that questions it or wants to limit it is crazy. The law enforcement handbooks and manuals and the videos I've been sent by police of what FEMA and Homeland Security is teaching them, doesn't matter if it's Democratic administrations or if it's George W. Bush, it's horrible. They're saying that if you question government, if you get involved, if you speak out, you're bad. And that's a classic example and a key indicator of tyranny out of control. Well, one of the things that I think we need to rely on is, uh, you know, the fact that there's a long tradition in America separating the military from the police. Um, George Washington, for instance, you know, refused kingship, um, you know, was, was, was offered this title. Um, but refused to take on that role, um, suggesting that you know it, it was not uh, right for uh, a movement in those days that was about um, opposing the uh, state, you know, the, the quartering of soldiers in people's houses and so forth. It was an anti-militarism that sort of founded this country, and, and the separation between the military and the police is kind of the, the foundation upon which our democracy is built. So I think one of the things that people need to look at is the ways in which that we can recodify the Posse Comitatus Act, the Posse Comitatus Act being the criminal statute which bars the military from enforcing laws domestically.
Texas is known as the live music capital of the world. And Oza Motley is a Grammy Award winning band that has no history of causing any problems. They came to Austin, their venue was totally jam-packed. In the middle of their set, the fire marshal requested that they help get the crowd outside because it was overflowing. When they did that, police from outside rushed in on them and said, get people back in the bar, don't have them come out on the sidewalk. This was all caught by tourists on tape as they peacefully complied, but the police were already in that mad dog mentality and began assaulting the crowd with tear gas and then arresting members of the band, including the manager, and charging some of them with felonies, despite the fact that nothing illegal was caught on tape and no one resisted them. This is becoming a very serious pattern, not just in Austin, Texas, but around the country. I went to Cuba, you know, for like 10 days. This is supposed to be a dictatorship, you know, truly, you know. I'm kind of, you know, and uh, I was an agent to throw the election to George W. Bush. The Democrats say anybody but Bush, whereas in reality, it really doesn't matter. Either way, they've got this election fixed. As we said, this is the American dictatorship where the elite gets their man, their puppet, their figurehead in the position of power. We're foreign assistance and credits. We had our corporations apply and receive export permits from the Department of Commerce in the 1980s under the Reagan and Bush one administration, providing this brutal dictator with the raw materials for chemical and biological partially responsible, our government was partially responsible for Saddam Hussein, as we were supporting any so-called anti-communist dictator in the world. Along with the British, we helped entrench him as a dictator of Iraq in 1979. We equipped him with arms. We gave him... And I have to tell you that after having a chance to talk to Ralph Nader's staff, after being able to interview Mr. Nader, I do think that there is a well-founded suspicion by a lot of Democrats that Ralph Nader is acting, whether unconsciously or consciously, as... Warfare? In 1983, Donald Rumsfeld, Special Envoy, visited Saddam Hussein when these materials were being used and didn't say anything. He was our dictator, after all, wasn't he? He was our dictator. The U.S. government has overthrown 